are gonna love this interview. Just got done editing it. I'm glad I got it live for you. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes hanging out, answering any questions you have. In fact, leave a comment below about data points or what you think is gonna happen to the company and I will respond to every comment. Additionally, if you're just loving the content, click the thumbs up and I will go and check out your profile as well and give your videos some love as well. In the meantime, enjoy the interview. Hello, everyone. My guest today is Chris Ronzio. He's the founder and CEO of Trainual, a SaaS platform for entrepreneurs and employees to get their business out of their brain by documenting and delegating the processes in their company. Chris, you ready to take us to the top? Yeah, let's do it. So I thought about you earlier this week because we put out a big piece on GitLab and uh, we had Sid on the show. And one of the things that he credits to so much of his success for scaling his remote team is his employee handbook, 700 pages worth of wow. stuff. This is, is this kind of what you're helping companies do, document this stuff? Yeah, policies, processes, procedures, best practices, like all everything that the company knows collectively, we want to put that in one place so you can access it as you scale. Mm -hmm. And so for people that missed your first episode, give us the quick update here. When did you launch the company? What year? January 2018. So it's been almost two years. 2018. That's great. Now, bootstrapped or raised? Bootstrapped. Even today, totally bootstrapped. So we did a convertible note round just after my last episode last year. So December 2018, um, we bootstrapped the whole first year. And then this year, the convertible notes have uh, grown us to this point. Okay. How much did you raise on convertible notes? Hey, Chris, 50, how much? 50? 750. Oh, 750. Okay. Do you, looking yeah. back, I mean, did you need that capital or was it more like a cushion, a fluffy thing? We did if we wanted to keep scaling our advertising so that it had, you know, scaling our ads on my credit cards. It got us to where we were and we wanted to keep it going. So, how, I mean, how aggressive are you being like last month? You're talking like 30 grand a month spent on ads? No, last month we were probably 120,000. Oh, wow. Ads. OK, so is this your main growth channel? It has been to date, but it's starting to flip where we're getting more of our signups from organic now, just based on how much content and marketing we've done. Okay, well, so let's dive into that. So you launched in 2018. Yeah. Um, people are buying, uh, who is buying this typically? Is it head of HR? It could be HR, could be operations, could be sales managers. So it's anyone with a team that they want to train or get up to speed faster. People use us for onboarding their new employees and then for just keeping everybody consistently up to speed on the, the newest stuff. Okay, and so what are they paying on average per month for this or per year? On average, uh, they're a little over a hundred dollars a month. Okay, so and are you like a thirteen hundred a year? Are you upselling against like number of seats or feature based upselling? How do you upsell? We have two packages that are split based on features. So the premium one has like built in screen recording and and animations and Giphy and stuff like that. Um, the base plan just doesn't have that. Um, but then it's based on twenty five user increments of seats. Twenty five user increments of seats. So it's essentially staged yeah. buckets, basically. Yeah. So the big utility of our app is it's tracking everyone individually being trained up to speed, up to date. And so we didn't want to sell per license per user and have people share logins and kind of game the system. So mm -hmm. 25 user buckets kind of match with the stage of a company. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. Now you have really invested in your SEO game since the last time you came on. So according to Ahrefs, you've added almost 400 referring domains over two, 2,300 backlinks over the past 12 months. How are you doing that? Is it internal or do you hire an agency or what? No, we do all of our marketing internal. So it's been just a lot of outbound PR efforts. We've started doing a lot of content on our website, guest posts. We sponsored events. We sponsored podcasts. So we've gotten a lot of traffic from those things. Okay. Interesting. So what is the team size today and what's the title of the person managing kind of the backlink, the SEO growth? So team size 24 today. And uh, my brother actually is our CMO and he's still managing all the, the marketing content. Oh, very cool. Okay. Who owns more of the company, yeah. you or him? Me. Oh, nice. So how, are you older too? I am. So he came along for the ride. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that. All right. So 24 folks full time. How many engineers? Uh, six. Six. Okay. Any quota carrying yeah. sales reps at this price point or is it too low for field, field sales? No, we've got two sales reps, but they're 100% inbound. So it's more about just talking to customers that need extra help. Interesting. Okay, so sc ad spend scaling. Like a lot of people have this thing where if I just raise, I can just spend 100 grand a month and it'll work. You're actually are now spending that much per month, but I imagine it wasn't just a flick of a switch, right? Talk to me about some of the learning curves on that. 
Yeah. So the ramp went up pretty consistently when I was on here last year, I think we were spending 30 or 40,000 a month and we went up to 50 and then 55 and then 60. And as we were doing it, we're constantly measuring our acquisition costs, how many signups per week we have, and then making sure that a huge swath of those customers aren't canceling as soon as they get in the app. Um, because that's a challenge that we saw last fall. We brought in a huge wave where we like doubled our customer count in a month. And then we saw uh, our, our churn spike because we got a lot of bad customers. So we were a little more careful about how we ramped up, but um, it's just been swapping out better creative and saying what messaging resonates with the customers that are staying the longest and what case studies do we have from, you know, we've got 200 customers doing this particular thing. Let's make a case study out of it and target our marketing a little more. So it's just gotten a little more sophisticated, I'd say, in the last year. And so how many customers are you now working with today? Uh, we're just over 2,500 now. Okay, that's so significant. We'll end this year, yeah. I mean, you were at 600 last time you came on the show. Right. It's been a big year. Yeah, that's no, great. I mean, congratulations. Yeah. So 2,500 at hundred bucks a month. I mean, that's 250 grand a month in, in MRR. Is that about right? Yeah, that's it. We hit that last month. That's so. great. And yeah, that's up, I you. mean, that's up from again, about 60,000 exactly a year ago, right? It's almost three, well, no, four or five X year over year growth. Yeah. So we should end this year at the about 3.5 ARR. Yeah. That's, I mean, this is, this is like the kind of story you love hearing. Now, let me ask you a question. Would you ever get to the point and kind of pull a, pull a Zapier where you essentially actually pay back that convertible note instead of converting it and doing an equity round? No. So we had an interesting trigger in our convertible note where once we hit a certain revenue threshold, the ability for me to pay back went away. So uh, it was investor friendly, <laughs> oh. <laughs> but, but I was good with it because I didn't want to be in a position where we're spending all the investor money and then I don't have the money to pay them back if they demand it. So it was, it was kind of like they took a flyer and, and they get the reward for that. Uh, that's interesting. So it sounded something like, we'll give you 750 at like a 6% interest rate and like a 20% discount. But once you hit, like yeah. I'm making this up, 2 million bucks in ARR, we get 10% of the company. Yeah, it was like that. So interesting. Yeah, so, so it was kind of creative, but so is everything we do, I guess. Why did you <laughs> choose to use convertible notes instead of actual just regular debt? So at the time, we didn't really have many options for regular debt. So I was looking at, you know, the revenue based lending and what I could get from them as a multiple of our trailing 90 days MRR and and uh, the convertible debt I could get a lot more of. So and for and it was also a few close uh, contacts. So it was kind of like these had been advisors that helped on the business and they wanted to come in and be a part of it. Yeah. Would you consider if you wanted to raise more so to avoid him of equity, would you consider going out and raising debt today, traditional debt? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, I think yeah, that's a great view. If you've got a marketing vehicle that's working like we do, I think that's a, a, a absolutely a good option. What would be enough where it's worthwhile to actually take it? Like is 500 grand, you know, three, four months of ad spend meaningful to you? Or would you try and raise more? Uh, it'd have to be more, I would okay. say. Interesting. Because what, yeah, because it depends on the debt structure. You know, if you're only taking a few months of, of ad spend, then a few months you blow through it. And now you've got some multiple of that debt, or at least some fraction of the debt that you've got to pay back and you're servicing debt. It doesn't keep working for you. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it would have to be a, um, a longer term amount of money. When you say longer term, if someone offered you, I'm going to make this up, you know, 700 grand on a three year term, right? Flat line. So it's not an RBF. It's not percent of revenue. It's just flat line interest rate. It caught somewhere between like 14 and 20%. Is that kind of structure more interesting to you? Cause you can use that to drive MRR today. Yes. I would say if, if the interest rate was low enough and you can model it where our payback period is, you know, called four months today, if I can bring in all those customers with some accelerated ad spend and have new cash flow to service that debt over the next window of, of time, it could make sense. Um, it would just depend on the, the structure. Interesting. All right. I might be sending yeah. you a term sheet after this, uh, <laughs> what, 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 just to get the juices going. Um, so churn was 48% gross revenue churn annually about last year, but your cohort size was small because you just launched. What's what was gross revenue yeah. turn over the past 12 months? So it's gone down a bit, but it's still in the high 30s, low 40s. So it's what we've saw, though, is that the customers we bring in, if they if we can get them activated, which means that they've added a few users, create a few things inside Trainual, they stick. It's Wait, hold on. What, be specific. What is create a few things four, inside? OK, so four users and four subjects is our metric. Four by four. We've got posters of like a Jeep driving <laughs> up a hill all over the office. 
So if they do four by four, churn is under 1% monthly. It's like a like 0.7% monthly, which, which is really where we want to see overall churn trending toward. And so our game is how do we invest enough in customer success to ramp those customers up quickly, guarantee their success. Now, not all of them that sign up are, are ready for the tool. So part of ramping up our customer success is identifying, hey, this probably isn't a good fit for you yet. Um, let's not convert you. Um, so, we're, so we're evaluating that. And what does CAC look like today to get a new $100 a month customer? Uh, three fifty to four hundred dollars. Okay, so that's about the same as what it was last year. About three to four month payback period. Yes. Which it, I mean, which is help. By the way, like there are so many companies. Madwire is a great example of this, playing almost at this exact same price point in the SMB space, where their churn is high, caught even higher than yours. But their their payback period is so fast, and they're spend and they're adding so much new. They know that two customers are going to ten x their price point five years from now from a new cohort of a hundred, and that's all they need right. to make the cohort profitable. So it works. Right. Right. And you get so much great knowledge from the cohort and the, the the ones that are churning. Like I think one of the things we've done well in the last year is we've gotten scientific about why people cancel and calling customers and having conversations. And it's like free market study research. You know, they signed up, gave us a month or two or three months of, of revenue, covered their acquisition costs, and we learned how to get better in the future. So I, I think it's healthy if the economics work. It makes total sense. Now, are you guys burning cash today to drive growth? Surprisingly, we just crested the profitability, cash flow profitable mark. Um, the the and that's due to annual sales. So annual sales coming in, the cash flow from those, um, you know, keeps our keeps us right about break even. Um, whether we we start to burn, take on new debt, take on equity, it's kind of up in the air right now. But um, that's that's where we're at, and I feel like it's a a good place to be. Would you do a big equity round right now or no? What was that? Would you look at equity right now? If, if a VC came to you and said, here's X for X percent of the company, would you look at it? Yes. And the reason would be if it was strategic and if they've done the small business scaling uh, path before, if they, you know, they've, they've got connections for us, if they've got, you know, there, there's, I think more reasons to take equity than beyond just the, the financial side of it. So open to anything. Who's your dream VC? Oh, um, the, the, uh, the one with the best terms. <laughs> <laughs> That's the know. best answer I've ever heard to that question. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's wrap up Chris with the famous five. Number one, favorite business book. Uh, we, I just read radical candor and I, I would listen to it. I listened twice and it was so helpful for where we're at in our team size. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? I'm in a, I'm in this group called SAS Academy with 75 other CEOs. And so I'd say all of them, like my peers are who I'm studying. Yep. Number, uh, do you, are you close to David at Jetpack Workflow? Yeah, he's great. Okay, good. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building your company? Profit well. <laughs> Number uh, four, how many hours of sleep are you getting every night? About seven. Okay. And what's your situation? Married, single kiddos? Married, two kids. Okay, good. You're a busy guy. Uh, last question. What do you wish yeah. your, tw- actually, how old are you? Uh, 34, 34. Okay. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? Um, I would say like at, do it. Na- my dad always said, do it now growing up. Like, and he meant carry my shoes up the stairs or whatever. But I feel like when I go to a conference and I get a good idea and my brother and I go back to the hotel room and execute that night, that's when we see the biggest results. So I would say just do, do things now. Tranual guys, helping brands, small businesses, document processes that ultimately are what drive the business growth. Launched the company in 2018, over 2,500 customers today. They're doing $250,000 a month in revenue up from $60,000 a month just a year ago. So over 300% year over year growth. Their number one engine ad spend, 120,000 bucks spent last month to get new customers, spending about 300 bucks to get a new customer or 400. So about a three to four month payback period. They did raise 750 grand on a convertible note to drive some of that growth. Now 24 folks on the team, six engineers, two quota carrying sales reps, still about 40% gross revenue churn come down a little bit, but look, it works with the other unit economics. Chris, man, we're rooting for you. Thanks for taking us to the top. Thanks, Nathan. You guys know I fight like heck to get these data points for you from these CEOs that rarely do these kinds of shows. If you want more shows like this, make sure you subscribe right now. We're trying to get 10,000 YouTube subscribers by the end of September here, 2019. And it would mean the world to me if you clicked now to subscribe. Additionally, I've got two more great interviews for you. If you want more data points from the world's leading SaaS CEOs, click and watch one of them right now.